Hi, welcome to part four of the lathe video series. I'm trying a new thing this time, I'm trying to do a uh, separate voiceover after the fact. You can see here I am going, trying to get a rough measurement for my second rail. My first rail is in place. It has the bolts in, but not fully tightened. And I'm just using calipers to get rough measurements for where the first bolt is going to go on the second rail. Maybe this is a little bit dumb, but right here I'm using two gauge blocks. I think it's a four inch and a two and a half inch gauge block uh, to get the spacing between my rails consistent on each end. Later on, I would start using my dial indicator, sweeping it along the second rail to get a better reference, but I hadn't thought of that yet. So for now, I'm just using these since my calipers couldn't quite reach that far. And now here I'm using my transfer punch to make the first mark for the holes for the second rail. Unfortunately for the 34 bolts I need for this set of linear rails, I got all of them 4 millimeters too long. So I have threaded each one through this piece of scrap metal and then I'm using the back of my calipers as a depth measurement um, and then I'm just grinding them all down four millimeters. This worked pretty well although it's extremely tedious. Doing 34 of them, look at how fast I got. This is in real time of course. Took about two years off my life, but the bolts are all done. I'm putting my rail car on for the very first time right now. I was super, super nervous putting this on, um, but it went on totally smoothly. It really was a pretty easy process. The, uh, the little dust scraper seems to be really good. It, uh, I thought that I'd cleaned off my rails at least decently well, and it immediately scraped a little bit of dust all the way to the end of the rail. This is me drilling and tapping the first hole for my second rail. I've, I did a ton of drilling and tapping during this last week and a half, and I'm gonna cut out most of that so you don't have to watch the same thing over and over again. But I figured I should at least include one or two since it was such a major part of what I was doing. Here I'm fastening down the first side of my second rail. That way when I start to line up the opposite side, I won't have to worry about this side shifting around and being misaligned. I tried to just center it the best I possibly could in the hole, and that's why you can see me fiddling around with it, just trying to get it centered. I could probably have wrapped the bolt in tape or something, but I just did it visually and it worked out in the end. So earlier in the video when I was using the gauge blocks for the spacing between the rails, this is when I finally figured out I could just use the indicator. This very first pass, I think it did about four revolutions, it was wildly not straight. But it really was just a couple passes back and forth, just guess and check over and over. 
till it was, I think, within maybe five thou when I decided that was good enough to just mark my hole and drill it. Now that both holes are drilled and tapped, I'm putting a bolt into each one and clamping it down to set the second rail in position. I'm then taking a dial indicator and making a pass just to double check that it's still aligned with the first rail. Um, I don't want to put in 15 holes in the middle and then realize that the second rail was slanted and I have to undo everything. So this quick little double check can hopefully save me some time and it worked out fine. So that was good. And now I'm going and marking each of my holes with the transfer punch. And then in a second, I'm going to drill and tap them as well. After all that, I quickly chamfered all the holes just to make them look pretty and take the burrs out. And now here, I was really pleased because it's hard to tell on camera, but the entire rail can actually wiggle pretty significantly back and forth with all the bolts in, um, meaning they're very well aligned with the centers. Um, normally I mess that up like crazy, but I guess this time it went all right. And now here, I'm taking my my first rail, my master rail, and I've got it against a straight edge there with the indicator, just trying to finish straightening it. It was out about two thou on the very end, so I'm just using that piece of cedar and just slowly bumping it back and forth with the bolts loosened so that way I can adjust and get it fully straight. At this point in my process, my master rail is about as good as I can get it. It's straight within about a half a thou and as flat and without twist as I can possibly get. Um, now I'm using it to check the vertical alignment of the secondary rail. Um, I'm going just making a pass back and forth with my indicator and then just marking with a sharpie how high the high spots are basically. The low spot is on the far left, and then everything from there generally slopes upward. And then I'm just going to have to spend a long, long, long time grinding it. I got it from, I think, 11 thou at the highest high, down to about maybe 7 thou is the highest high now. Um, but over this next week, I'm going to have to bring that all the way down. Although, I just put the rail back on after this, just to be able to make a little bit more progress because I've done so much grinding lately I just didn't want to keep doing that. I'm just going to skip the rest of the grinding to keep this video moving. This was a really exciting step. I'm cleaning up my headstock casting and I'm actually installing the spindle. I had this ready before, but I haven't tried putting the actual bearings in place and the axle in place with the outer races of the bearings cast into the epoxy granite. 
and uh, you can see I've, I just I coated the outer races in paste wax just to make absolutely sure if epoxy granite got in there it wouldn't bond to it so I cleaned out the paste wax with some mineral spirits and now I'm sliding on the inner races um, the fit on here it's pretty good it's a little bit loose for the first two inches or so which doesn't really matter it just needs to slide past that to where the inner race is actually going to contact and then when it gets all the way in I I thought it had maybe one or two tenths of play maybe I was having trouble measuring it I just used the uh, little lock washer type thing that I made um, to bang it into place the opposite inner race of bearing is a compression fit on the shaft I'm a big fan of these pointed end set screws for my two lock washers that sit on either side of my uh, inner races of bearings. They basically go and thread into the lock washer and then bite into the shaft itself. That way from both sides the inner races can't slide out. Um, and then on the uh, front side I have set screws going through that are parallel to the axis of the lathe um, and then those can basically push into a washer that I made which can set the preload of the bearings. Here's the front lock washer which does the preloading. Um, you can see those three large set screws which have nuts on them to lock them once the preload is set. First I'm just going to lock the lock washer onto the shaft and then I'm going to tighten those preload set screws and then lock them in place once I've got a reasonable preload. All right, well, a ton happened the last two weeks. Um, I'm just gonna finish showing the assembly of the headstock spindle here, and then I'll be dropping wrenches until the next video, apparently. Have a great rest of your week.